All right. Um, is everybody ready? I'm still catching my breath. Um, you know, first things first, I mean, what a heck of a game for the first game of the year. Um, I would have been proud of our guys win or lose that. You know, we um, went against one of the best teams in the country, one of the best arenas, best atmospheres in the country. And I just love the way that we had resilience and stuck together and, and uh, believed in each other. And, I mean, I learned a lot about our team. I mean, we didn't have – we had two scrimmages. I didn't quite know what to expect. And um, I had some veteran guys, and, and we were able to deal with a lot of adversity, when foul trouble and, and them making a run and getting up six in the second half. And, and we kept going. So, um, you know, I appreciate Coach Izzo giving us opportunity. Um, he is one of the best – um, coaches ever and um, college basketball is going to keep cherishing why he keeps coaching but I appreciate the opportunity for us to be able to come here. There have been some teams in the past, I'm sorry, can I go ahead? No, there have been some teams in the past, mid-majors, if you don't mind me using that expression, that have come here um, and then we find out the following March or a year later, Bucknell upsets Kansas, Lehigh upsets Duke. Did you schedule this thing that you had a chance to do something this year or in the future? Do you have more surprises in store? Well, you know, truthfully, we couldn't find a regional game to play. And, um, you know, I know Coach Izzo isn't scared to play anybody. I mean, we're a good, whatever you want to call us, good major, mid-major. And, um, you know, we've had good programs. But, you know, he's not scared to play us, and he gave us the opportunity. I mean... I know if he had a choice, he's probably playing the Pistons, the Bucks, the Lakers. I mean, you know, just to come up here and get tested. I knew we were going to learn a lot, and uh, it's great to do it in the win. Um, but, you know, if something happened and, and Tyson Walker makes that shot in the regulation, we still would have learned a lot. And um, we went back with our heads high, and then they pulled it out. But, uh, you know, some things fell our way, and some things that didn't fall our way, we fought through and kept on going. Coach, congratulations on this experience. It was, it's obvious it's, it's had an impact. And, um, you were up in the first half. Talk about your halftime speech and what that was like to keep the momentum and you know, you can give us whatever versions, PG, that's fine. Yeah, I mean it was it was pretty calm and about adjustments. And you know, the guys all walked in, they were already talking to each other and, and then there's like look us will win the first four minutes. Which that's something I always say. And I love the fact that my older guys, returning guys, were saying that before I got in there. And that first four minutes was, you know, tough. And, um, and then it was a battle all the way through. Um, but it wasn't, we made slight adjustments. Um, I thought we were doing some things well. The biggest adjustment, we had to try to figure out what to do on Walker. And uh, we knew they were going to go to him. We knew it was a tight game. He's going to get his touches. And sometimes we did a decent job. We didn't do a great job by any means. And he's a heck of a player. And we just did the best we could. Thank you. Uh, talk about the, the moxie that your guys had. It looked and sounded like they were confident. They were John with Michigan State. Michigan State's John back, um, but they didn't back down with their words or their actions. Yeah, I mean we're that's kind of a trait of ours. Um, I got certain guys on my team that that love an environment and love going against a great team like this. I mean Terrence Edwards was great energy all the way through, and and uh, I thought T.J. Bickerstaff was a stud. I thought he was unbelievable, and and then you know those guys. We're kind of going, and then next thing you know, some guys had to step up. I mean, Mike Green had to come in and step up and make a lot of plays. And then Raekwon Horton hit a huge shot. And we just kept talking about it all the time. Like, look, if we, if, if we make a mistake, it's not because we're scared. If we make a mistake, it's not because we hesitate. That we want to be aggressive all the way through, and we'll live with the results. I wanted to have you walk through the, the overtime there, particularly uh, – the, the, the job that bigger staff did going to the line there, and then uh, the three that you guys got as well after uh, Walker three drove. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, bigger staff is um, he's a physical player, and you know, the, the, the size of the Michigan State players um, doesn't affect him. I mean, he was a starting center in the ACC for a couple of years and productive in that league. So um, I don't think he. Was I don't, I don't think he had any hesitation in his game. I thought he was um, – his attitude kind of permeated throughout the team uh, of us being confident and aggressive. And the shot that Raekwon Horton got, it was not anything drawn up. Um, we tried to put the ball in a guy's hands that, that we thought they were going to collapse on. And they you know, made the right play. Um, we knew they were collapsing more and more. We were kind of getting in the seams there, and the, and the hands were getting there heavy. And we just we, – we said, you know, trust the pass, trust the kick. And 
We weren't shooting threes great. They weren't shooting threes great, but thankful that one went in. Michigan State was one for 20 from deep. Was that you or them? Well, it, first game's tough. And, um, you, you know, I think it was probably some of both, but I think it's the first game. And, you know, you look at NBA guys and, and the talent as they are those first couple games, it takes a while to get in rhythm in the crowd and, and, the, and intensity. And then we struggled with it, and I think they struggled with it. And, you know, I think that's going to be a good three-point shooting team. Um, I think we will too. Um, but tonight, give some credit to the defense. I think some guys, you know, miss some shots they normally make. One more thing. Uh, beginning of the game, how important was that for making you guys go from thinking you could win to thinking you would win? Yeah, we kind of, you know, one of the things we talked about yesterday, we talked about two starts. And we said, all right, what happens when they go up 10-2? We got to keep playing and fight back. Or what happens when we start 10-2? The game is not over. We got to keep playing. Luckily, it was the second one, and you know it helped for confidence. It helped for guys getting a rhythm. Um, it wasn't any type of thing where our guys needed something to believe they could win. I don't think that was ever shaken. But it's good to get off a good start in this environment because people will get steamrolled in here pretty quick when things start turning the wrong way. Coach, uh, congratulations on the great win. Uh, I was just wondering, what's the mood like uh, from the players in the locker room right now? And what does it mean to you as a coach to get a great win over Michigan State? Yeah, I mean, it, it's something that, that I personally will cherish later on. Uh, the guys, you know, is, is an ecstatic locker room. Um, it's because of the respect we have for Michigan State and their history and their players. And, um, you know, for, for me, I'm like, we got to get ready for Kent State on Thursday. And it's going to be a tough one, and and the great team. I won 28 games last year in the NCAA tournament, and and um, it was a tough road week schedule. Well, luckily we got this one, and this can't be our biggest game of the year. You know, it's a, a great thing. You know, something we'll talk about later, and great for these guys. But um, you know, we got to keep getting better and keep getting better, and then our bigger games should come down the road. Coach, uh, big win in on the road today. What did you learn about you as coach and your guys in an environment like this? And uh, how do you think that's going to translate later into your season? Um, I'll talk about my guys. I don't know anything about myself. I'm still, my, my brain's rattling right now. But um, with the guys, you know, we didn't have a game in front of fans. We had two closed scrimmages. And one thing I wanted to see is what we we're going to be like in this tough environment and how we would react. And, you know, could we remain poised and stick to the game plan and, and, and still be aggressive and confident. And we did those things. So that's what I learned in, with those guys that, um, you know, against a really good team, tough situation that we were able to do a lot of good things. And, and that's something we can build on, but it's also something we can refer back to later on in the season. Be like, hey, we've been here before against a team and, and uh, we're able to pull it out. One of uh, 32 against ranked teams before today. Uh, biggest win was over 19 to Cal. Um, can you at all take a moment to appreciate what this means for this program and school? Yeah, I mean, um, to, to, me, to me, it's, it's just the fact that we beat a, such a well-coached team. And, and that's what, um, I mean, I was watching them on film and last year and this year, and, and the things they do is just unbelievable. It's such a really good team. And, and and with that, I went up to um, you know Tyson Walker and in the line we know him. We cope with when it gets somebody's at Northeastern, and I very well can see this being something that leads them to greatness. You see sometimes you know teams lose to a non-one or, or some or some losses that get them going. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if, if if this and something else you know throughout the season helps them get to a Final Four this year. I mean they're that good, that talented. And so we're going to be cheering for them. We, we hope they make a run. And um, it's great for JMU. It, it really is. I mean, JMU, our football team's top 20 in the country, uh, volleyball team, and everybody else wins there. So uh, at least we're keeping up our end of the bargain right now, at least for tonight. All right, one last question. Uh, Coach, you kind of alluded to it earlier. Tyson Walker, 17 points in the second half of that game. Can you kind of just talk about what you thought of him at the end of the game and like what adjustments he forced you to make? Yeah, so we weren't surprised. When he was at Northeastern, um, we were in the same league in the CAA. And uh, there was a game we went against him, and he had over 30, and we just couldn't stop him. And, you know, history repeats itself. We were in that second half, and we couldn't stop him. And, you know, maybe we got to his legs a little bit, but um, 
I wouldn't have been surprised that last shot goes in. I mean, he's one of the best in college basketball. Uh, great career, great leader. Um, I've coached against him before. He's one of the best, and and I, I bet you he makes that shot next time. Nice All right, thanks, guys.